Just as the trim and extend commands work very similarly to each other, if not virtually identical, the fillet and chamfer commands are also similar. Now the fillet command creates a tangent arc between two lines, and a chamfer creates an angled line between two lines, and the processes are very similar. You start the command, you define the arc radius, or the fillet in that case, or in the case of a chamfer, you define the distances for where the chamfer line goes. Either command is also very useful for quickly extending and or trimming two lines at a corner or a vertice. So let's look at an example file. Open up the chamfer fillet examples drawing file. Here I have a series of different lines, one that's a square, one that's a square with rounded corners, and a couple of different lines that need to be trimmed, extended, etc. So to start the fillet command, just type in the word fillet. Or you can press in the letter F. Now the fillet command is also found in the ribbon. Go to the Home tab, go to the Modify panel, and go right here. This is the fillet command. If you click on this flyout, you have the fillet and you have the chamfer. They work very similarly. So we're going to start with the fillet command. Type in the letter F, press Enter. Now we need to define the radius. Type in the letter R, press Enter, and you have to type in your value. I'm going to use a value of two. So I'm going to zoom in here, I'm going to click that first line, and then click the second line. You'll see here it'll give you a little preview of what it's going to look like when you're finished. And that's the fillet command. It's very simple to use. Now the chamfer command works very similarly. Type in CHA for chamfer, or you can find it on the ribbon right here. And you enter in the distances for your lines. So if I pick the number two, and then I enter in number two again, press enter. Now I pick my first line and my second line. And you can see there's my preview. Puts a little notch in the corner. So if I start the chamfer command again, for my distance, let's say my first one is two, and then my second one is five. Press enter, selecting this line, then I select this line. Now you'll see here that the distance it moved for this line was two units, that's my first distance, and then my second one was three. Now that distance, which one's going to be two, which one's going to be three? Well, you have two numbers. So the first number goes with the first line you pick, and the second number goes with the second line you pick. So if I undo this, type in chamfer. For my distances, let's say I type in the same way again, two and five, and if I pick this line first, it'll have the shorter distance, and this one will be the longer distance. So it just depends on what you need and what you want to do, and make sure you get that order correct. And when you fill it or chamfer, lines can abut, or go past, or not even touch each other. So if I type in F for fillet, I'm going to give it a radius of two. You see these two lines here intersect each other, they cross. Well, that's okay. Pick here, and I pick there, and it fillets it no problem. Start the fillet command again, and when you do use the fillet command again, it will default back to the last radius that you entered in. So I'm still using the same two unit radius. So this line stops up here, or it abuts up to this other line. If I pick up here, it'll put my radius on the top. If I pick down here, it'll go towards the bottom. Now these two lines don't even touch each other at all. If I start the fillet command again, I pick this line, and I pick this line, you can see here it extends out the line and then makes the fillet where they would intersect. Same way with this line here, and this line, it extends the one line that it needs to and trims the other and then inserts the radius. Chamfer works the exact same way. So if I set my distance at two and two, I can pick here and here, here and here, and so on. Now, there could be a case where you don't want to put in a fillet or a radius, but you just want to sort of trim both lines together. Now you can do that, and you can do that with either command, and you do it the exact same way. So if I type in chamfer, C-H-A, D for distance, and I type in zero and zero for both of them, that's exactly what it's going to do, make a chamfer of zero. And it just trims up and extends the lines up exactly the way I want. If I start the fillet command, tell it a radius of zero, press return, pick my first line and my second line, and it goes to it. Now this right here is a polyline. I can make a fillet of a polyline. Select my objects, 
and it changes it. And it's still a polyline. Chamfer will do the same thing. Now here's another little trick for the fillet command, and it also works for the chamfer command. So let's say I have a fillet and it has a radius of two. And I'll show you. It gives us a radius of two. Well, let's say I need to create a corner for that. I can start the fillet command, and I showed you if I set the radius to zero, it will make it a radius of zero. Well, I don't want to do that because I want to keep making other fillets for the same radius, and I don't want to change what I'm doing. So if I hold on the shift key and then I pick these two lines, it'll create a fillet of radius zero. If I start my fillet command again, I do nothing else. I can keep going with my radius of two units. I see here on this radius that it created, it didn't delete this because that line wasn't touched. And this is not a polyline. It's just the broken up individual lines. So that's the fillet and the radius command. They both work very similarly to each other. You can use them to make rounded or angled corners. You can use them to square off a corner by setting the distance or radius to zero, or you can just hold down the shift key when you select your two lines to fill it or chamfer, and that will automatically do it, and you won't have to change any settings.